It's rare to get a finish like this off the gun. Welcome to this episode of The Gunman. This video here is part 14 on my VL Turbo project and I'll be taking you guys through the flow coating on the body. The previous videos have gone right through all the repairs, masking, primer work, painting and I decided because this is my own car and I'd never done it to one of my own cars before, I just wanted to give it a flow coat. So I painted this car the Sunday following and this was a Friday afternoon. I saw a couple of hours, uh, it was about 2 o'clock on Friday afternoon, got a couple of hours free to myself and I thought you know what, I'm just going to get the body flow coated on my car. And that's all it actually ended up taking, 2 hours, 2 to 3 hours maximum and the job was done. So the prep work I'm doing, as you see there, I've got the orbital sander, I've got some 600 grit on that and I've also got that interface or that soft pad. Uh, it's pretty important to use that soft pad when doing flow coating because it's quite easy to cut through that clear and as soon as you cut through that clear into the base coat you'll be needing to put some more color on it and if you're putting color over it well then it's not going to be flow coating because flow coating is clear over clear not clear over base coat. The advantages to flow coating is achieving a superior off the gun gloss and flatness that you will probably not be able to achieve if you were to just paint it once and then polish it. You can still get some really nice finishes by polishing up uh, a car after being painted the first time but flow coating is really taking it to the next level. Next up we've got it in the booth but I did also go around all of those edges, the shiny spots with a 800 grit softback sanding sponge and I also sanded over the entire panel with the 800 so that is the final grade of sanding for flow coating. It's not a 100% definite. I wouldn't personally want to go much coarser than that for your final grade um, because you will run the risk of having that your second flow coat uh, shrinking back into those sanding scratches. I had a guy make a comment on the previous video I made on how to flow coat where I did my bonnet. He said, oh, why did you finish it off? So uh, fine, you could have probably used 400 grit. Um, 400 grit would uh, extremely increase the chance of cutting through because it is quite coarse and also you would get I would imagine a bit of shrinking back into the sanding scratches as well. You could also do it wet if you wanted, but I find dry sanding is a lot cleaner, it's a lot quicker. There's uh, obviously no water to clean off the entire car, so you're saving time there. Um, you can also see what you're doing a bit more. All it takes is the air gun, the air line, and you dust it off, and then you can see exactly what you have and haven't done. Sometimes with uh, the wet rubbing, you get water all over the place and sludge, and you can't really 100% see what you've done until you dry it off and then you find you've missed a bit and then you're back to your prep work stage. So basically it's very rare that I will do any wet rubbing these days. There's really no advantage to it. Sandpaper technology has come a long way since the 80s and it's no longer necessary. Anyway, on with our masking, just making sure you don't have your tape edge too close to the exterior panel. Just make sure it's not too close so that you're not gonna get bridging up of that clear coat. So I like to make sure it's peeled back, just say a couple of mil off that edge, where possible, obviously. There you go, I uh, left that video footage in just so you could have a look at my cool cupboard up there that I stick a bomb with my airbrush when I was going through my stage of having a bit of fun with my airbrush and custom paints, which I never seem to get enough time to do these days. I'm uh, just more focused on making a couple of bucks by doing some work and working on my own car, as you see here. So I left out most of the masking stage for the body, but I've decided I'll be putting the entire masking stage of the body up on my raw channel when I get the time to upload it. So there you go, that's all my masking there. There was really not much edge masking for me or back masking, it was just around those wheel arches and then in that boot gap I just used my false edging so I flipped the edge of a piece of three quarter inch tape over my knee, flipped it up and dragged it along. I've got another video tutorial on that if you guys would like to see it. Um, it's a very good method for masking door jams and gaps and stuff like that. I've found you get a very minor edge, if anything. And once it's all masked up, the next stage was to wipe the entire job down with wax and grease remover. I did skip that step out, but don't uh, underestimate the importance of doing the wax and grease remover stage. It'll give you a bit of gloss back over the dull panel and it'll also let you see if there's any bits of grit or fingerprints or 
uh, any spots that you have cut through. It'll basically emulate uh, what it's going to be looking like when you've got your clear coat over it. So um, just have a good check over it when you are doing your prep sole stage. And then obviously you give it a really good tack rag down. I skipped out again most of that footage. But I did that three times over the entire thing, wiped it down with the tack rag, treating this booth like a hospital, making sure it's really clean, watered down on the floor, and uh, trying to eliminate any chance of dust. So mixing the paint up there, um, I had the paint sitting in some hot water to heat it up. The temperature was about 50 degrees, uh, 54 I think it was, Celsius, so that's going to be cooling down as I'm painting and ready to start getting our paint on now. So setting my gun up, the Starter Jet 5000B RP 1.3 mil with a digital gauge on it. I've got the fluid set to three turns out and the air pressure is at 1.3 bar, which is approximately 17 to 20 PSI. I've been leaving that fan at full fan lately. Haven't been closing it up at all and it sprays real nice with these settings. Some people like to adjust those settings and at the end of the day, settings are there for a reason. If it was all meant to be that one setting, well then they wouldn't uh, have those dials on there and anything that you could change. But I would not go and paint everything with exactly these settings. If I was doing base coat, then I'd probably be changing it around a little bit. Uh, temperature, uh, what you're painting. Um, you may want to close that fan up a bit if you need to spot in somewhere on an engine bay. Um, so yeah, I really do try and tell people to paint by feel. Um, just get the feel of how the paint's going on, your conditions, the temperature, and all that's going to vary how you have to paint, um, the viscosity of your paint, all that kind of stuff. I learned to paint by feel. We never had any gun regulators on our guns back then. I was taught to leave the fluid wide open so it's just about to fall out and have the fan wide open too. And just adjust your application to suit the kind of finish that you're trying to get, which can be done, but I don't recommend it anymore. I went through a stage when I just turned trays on, so I was starting to paint a bit more, and it was going through one of those Melbourne winters, and I was just getting runs in every single job. And I was really at the point where I was just about ready to leave the trade. And I had this uh, quite experienced tradesman, and he just said, all right, mate, I'm gonna spend a little bit of time with you. All he did was wound that fluid right in, so the two and a half turns out, and it's like basically overnight, my finishes were much better, and it made a massive difference just by winding that fluid in. That was on the original DeVilbus GTI with the 110 air cap on it. It was also before I knew that awesome trick of heating the clear up, which is what I'm doing here. Now, I wouldn't do that on a hot day. Anything sort of above 25, 30 degrees, I wouldn't be heating the clear up. I'd just be adding a little bit of extra reducer to help that paint flow out a little bit more. But a couple of advantages of heating that clear up, it's going to stop the runs and it's also going to thin the clear down without putting reducer in it. So you're keeping more of the body of that clear because putting too much reducer in can start to break the clear down just a little bit and you will start to lose a little bit of gloss. If you put too much in, like 10%, that's fine. 15%, that's fine. I really wouldn't want to go and put much more than 15% reducer in your clear coat. So the clear coat that I am using here is the Standox HS Clear. Now, the way I see it, if you're going to be doing a flow coat job, you may as well use a good quality clear. No use in using some El Cheapo uh, concept or whatever clear that you've got sitting around. Um, if you go into the effort to flow coat, use the nice HS clear. So that's our first coat down. Uh, it's looking quite nice already, nice and flat. It's only gonna come out better with that second coat. So my flash off times was as long as it took me to mix up my next coat of clear, Bang, it was ready to go straight away. Uh, you can do your tack test. You can uh, put your finger on the masking right next to where you've painted. And um, as long as it's starting to pull that masking up and sort of start tacking, uh, well, then it's right to go on with your second coat. You don't want to do it too quick or else you can end up risking the chance of solvent boil. But that's just another advantage of heating your clear up. Your flash off times are basically non-existent. Uh, as soon as you get around the job, well then bang, it's right to go straight away. I'm going to put some tunes on for a couple of minutes. If you'd like to see my reaction after painting this, skip up to the 14 minute mark.
Let us know your thoughts on me whacking a little bit of music in some of those longer painting clips. If you think it's good, then uh, leave it in a comment below. As always, don't forget to hit that thumbs up button, show your support to my channel, check out all my social media. There's links in the description below. Check out my website as well, thegunman.net.au. And just hang around for another minute here, you'll see how happy I was after painting this. A little bit of colourful language in there, so if the kids are watching, maybe uh, turn it off. Let's just admire the beauty of flow coating. It's rare to get a finish like this off the gun. And to have done it on my own car is absolutely fucking amazing. It is clean, there is one or two bits of dust in it. Absolutely killer gloss out of it. I'm wrapped. That's dead flat through there. Use my Starterjet 5000B RP Standox HS Clear with standard hardener in it. Heat it up to around 50 degrees Celsius. I mean, that's around 130 Fahrenheit. But have a look at that, that's like a sheet of glass. Absolutely beautiful. This is what I live for, this shit. Most customers don't want to spend the money to get a flow coat done. It does involve a bit more time, effort and materials, but you can see why I finally decided to do it on my own car. Have a look at that. Yeah, we've got a couple of bits of dust in there. Nothing too bad. A couple here, a couple there, but all in all, that's quite clean. That one's in a perfect spot because the spoiler's going to be sitting over it, but... Oh. There you have it. 